the final exam is now going to begin. After all of his the other students are completely and done with their tests, it is now time for Bakugo and Izuku. Bakugo and Izuku are up against the number one hero, All Might, the biggest challenge they will face. Frankly, these small amounts of weights that are going to be on All Might won't make that much of a difference. He is a force to be reckoned with, and they'll immediately realize that when they become be or begin charging in to close in on his location. They both decided that they want to test their limits and fight All Might himself, and Azuku wants to as well. Exploding with his quirk and Bakugo does as well, he's trying to keep up with how fast Bakugo is currently moving. It seems like Bakugo himself has been training as hard as possible to make sure that there's nobody that gets a leg up on him. They continue to charge forward, and just as they close in on All Might, a giant gust of wind comes barreling their way. Crashing into both of them, they try to dodge, grabbing onto some lampposts and then eventually regathering themselves. They both make a plan and split up. They run off to basically counter All Might and make sure that he can't react to both of them at least at one-on-one -on -one vision. So immediately they come crashing in from different sides. All Might tries to react quick enough, blocking a, a hit from Bakugo, but then Azuku is able to land one blow to the stomach. When he does that, he releases a small bit of radiation to make sure that All Might would slowly but surely get toned down. His goal is just to slow down All Might. If he can slow them down, they can both escape. But it doesn't matter really. We're talking about the number one hero. All Might himself, someone that wields one for all, the strongest quirk around, someone that could basically knock you out in one punch. Will they be able to slow him down enough? Will they decide to just face All Might 1 or 2v1 and try to defeat him or try to escape to pass this exam? Well, let's find out in part 3 of What If Deku Had a Radioactive Quirk. Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Golden Falls Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. I am back with part 3 of What If Deku Had a Radioactive Quirk. This is most likely going to be not the last episode, but the second to last episode. The next part will be the last uh, part. And as always, if you enjoy, Make sure to leave a like, sub, comment down below, check the links in the description, and uh, yeah, that's about it. I hope y'all enjoy, and let's just get right back into the what if. Let's get it. They begin to go blow for blow with All Might. Obviously, being far, far weaker than All Might, he begins to get the advantage relatively quickly, throwing Bakugo out of building, and immediately Izuku grabs onto All Might's arm. He grabs onto his arm and struggles to hold on for dear life, Azuku trying himself to make sure that he doesn't overexpose everyone to radiation. He's been training extremely hard to make sure this is the case, but of course, emotional states rise extremely high when in scenarios like this. He looks to his right to see his friend Bakugo pretty hurt as he struggles to his feet, bleeding out of the back of his head. Immediately, Bakugo charges back in and tells Azuku to basically throw some radiation up in the air toward All Might. And just as he does this, he explodes right on top of the radiation, and it actually creates a far bigger explosion, actually burning All Might slightly and pushing him back away. They both realize that their quirks together may actually be extremely beneficial depending how they use it. So they begin to try and sync up their attacks, and, and Bakugo is basically trying to use any setup from Azuku to do damage to, to All Might. This will either get him out of this fight entirely, or will hopefully more or less allow them to go to the gate and escape. So they continue their onslaught, but All Might then grabs both of their faces and slams them into the ground, almost knocking out Bakugo entirely and injuring Azuku pretty bad. With a gash on the back of his head, and also a pretty hurt leg, Azuku begins to sl like slightly panic, but he remembers in his head that he needs to focus, relax, focus on what's at hand, and he begins to regenerate. Using gamma radiation, he's regenerating, but it seems like this emotion is slowly but surely flooding within him. Anger. He's mad. Why does he feel so angry right now? He gets madder and madder, especially seeing his best friend on the ground, practically unconscious. His body begins to grow, breaking entirely his suits, and it seems like he is slightly bigger. No, not just slightly, three, maybe four times bigger now. He looks at All Might, and he's almost as tall or maybe even taller than All Might now. They look dead into each other's eyes, and All Might is in complete shock. 
Azuku lands one giant punch to his stomach, sending him flying toward the gate. Azuku grabs Bakugo and jumps off toward the gate itself, beating on All Might. All Might sees what's happening and reverses it. Azuku is this wild cannon, or a loose cannon at this point. He is able to sweep his leg and get him on the ground, landing a stern punch to his face, but just as he does this, Azuku shrinks, and all the radiation that was within his body begins to dissipate and goes right to an unconscious Bakugo. Bakugo struggles to breathe now, and Azuku is almost out cold entirely. He's not going to be able to retract his radiation and help his best friend. All Might is shocked, but Azuku is struggling to his feet out of nowhere. All Might doesn't know what's happening, but he looks at his leg. It seems as if there's a cuff on it now. Azuku used that little glimpse of, of basically time to put that on his leg. He didn't realize that Azuku did have some control, but he was kind of being overwhelmed. In a last ditch effort, Azuku was able to actually put that or put a uh, the anklet on his leg without All Might knowing. Of course they win, but Azuku crawls over to Bakugo and begins to remove the radiation, but unfortunately he passes out before he's able to retract all the radiation from him. They're both taken to Recovery Girl's office and they are both spoken to relatively quickly and All Might, or All Might watches as Bakugo is extremely sick, throwing up in, in basically every toilet imaginable and Azuku is still out cold. They tell Bakugo that he just needs to hang in a little bit longer and that he knows they know that he feels extremely awful at this moment. He looks at Azuku and asks if he's really okay and they say yes. It seems that he tried some new power out that he wasn't exactly ready for and didn't know the repercussions that would have happened right after. And Azuku eventually wakes up after hours and unluckily enough Bakugo had to suffer through that for hours as well and the radiation was eventually taken out of Bakugo via Azuku. Bakugo immediately feeling a lot better, but Azuku personally feels bad. He put his friend in jeopardy, put everything in jeopardy. That's He's always been doing that, but All Might reassures him. There's a whole reason why they're going to the training camp, and that's the whole reason. So that he doesn't put anybody else in jeopardy. This is a reason why he's in this school. He's trying to learn, trying to get better. That's the whole point. And Azuku hearing this does make him feel a lot better. He's heard it before, don't get me wrong, but just feeling this way all the time must put a mental drain on anybody. Eventually, he would be allowed to leave and head over to the forest training camp. And when they arrive, they actually arrive at a giant hill. And when they are told exactly what they're going to have to do, they're all pushed off the mountain and told that the training camp starts right then and there. They begin trying to blast through monster after monster, and Azuku uses this time to try his best to control his quirk, realizing that that whole gamma power that he was using based on his emotion is probably the last thing he should be using. That was a giant risk that he took in that, in that, that instance, and he never wants to take that again. The gamma power should be used for regeneration only, and not for a hyper extension of power like he did before. He realizes that now, and he make, he'll make sure that he doesn't do it from here on out. He begins fighting through and through and actually comboing up with Bakugo relatively well in which Bakugo has to remind him that it wasn't his fault that he was trying to actually ramp up his power and do something more and help them out and there's nothing wrong with that. Bakugo in this instance he's kind of annoyed but then also not annoyed at the same time at Azuku's constant like worry over everyone else. Of course Bakugo does care about Azuku, but he also doesn't want him worrying about every little detail that he's ever dealt with in his life. So he tells him that there's a reason why they're training and that everyone struggles with their quirk to a certain extent. And maybe they'll even meet someone eventually that is even in less control than him. Nonetheless, their, their, their forest training camp, at least you're going through all those monsters, is eventually finished up. And they're met by Aizawa and the Wild Wild Pussycats. They tell him to get cleaned up eat some food, get ready for bed, and that in the next morning, they're going to be training extremely hard. Eventually, after doing all of the small things, obviously getting cleaned up and stuff like that, that next morning, they weren't, they weren't kidding. Their training begins off the bat. Azuku is actually tasked to fight multiple people at one after another and make sure that he doesn't lose control by any means, even if 
he sees another way out to win. Especially with his gamma radiation powers, Aizawa wants him to actually control it to the point that he just uses it for regeneration. Maybe one day, maybe when he's an adult and older, he'll actually be able to use it the way he did on basically against All Might to a bigger and better extent. But nonetheless, it's not the time for that, and it's too risky to actually go about it. Azuku continues training more and more, and eventually he does hear and learns about Koda. He talks to Koda a little bit and even actually chats with him about it, and Koda actually dismisses him. He doesn't really like Azuku, hearing about his risky quirk, and basically that he's, he should choose not to ever be a hero. Azuku hearing this doesn't really take this personally. It's a little kid that he's sure that has gone through a lot, and there's good reason to think that Azuku shouldn't be a hero. There's good reason to think that, frankly, he should just kind of learn how to use his powers and make sure that he can never use them in any scenario. But he wants to be someone that can prove that he can help even though his quirk is extremely dangerous. He hopes for that at least, and maybe that can eventually get across to Koda. One night though, when they're all eating food, he realizes that Koda's absent, so he decides that he's going to actually bring him food as well. Using his quirk, and obviously what he basically has copied from Bakugo, he kind of slowly but surely flies over to a, a slight mountaintop that he's seen Koda go to. He gives Koda the food and begins speaking with him about everything, about all of the stuff he's gone through and what he wants in his life. That he knows that his quirk is dangerous, that he lived in a bubble for years, and that he wasn't able to see his friends, wasn't able to have a normal life, and frankly his life now isn't normal. He's still in a bubble. And Koda's confused at what he means. How is he still in a bubble? And he says that he's still in this radioactive bubble. He's trying to basically learn how to use his quirk to the point that he's not normal. Like, he'll never be normal. He's always going to be just some ticking time bomb. He's basically got a villain's power that... And he's trying to be a hero. Koda is completely shocked to hear this, but before he can say a word... Another voice rises out of the ashes, or rises right out of the treetops, be and begins to tell Azuku something. Yeah, you're right. It is more of a villain quirk. It would be more ideal on your, you know, to have you on our side. Azuku is completely shocked. Who the hell is that? He grabs Koda and dashes away for a second, putting him down toward the, the exit of where that cliff is, and he looks to see a giant man. Azuku is telling Koda that he needs to go now that to not worry, but Koda refuses. Well, I guess it's less of refusal and more of him being scared senseless to actually move. Azuku plants his feet and fires off a giant explosion using his radiation toward Muscular. Muscular doesn't feel a thing, telling Azuku that he stands no chance in this battle. Azuku thinks otherwise. As he shoots out the ground, as smoke goes everywhere, and he grabs Koda and blasts off using his explosions. Azuku begins to think that whatever that thing is, he'll have to fight him eventually, but right now he should get Koda to safety. He sees that the entire place that they're completely at is kind of overrun. There are villains everywhere, and eventually he gets back to the camp, dropping off Koda. Aizawa tells him that he needs to stay there. There is no basically him going out anymore. He needs to stay. But Azuku refuses. He wants to make sure everyone's okay, and he knows that that other monster, Muscular, is there as well, so he blasts off toward to find Muscular. Eventually, he would come across him as he's approaching various Class 1B students. Azuku charging at Muscular, landing one blow to his face. Muscular is completely shocked as he can feel a, a slight burn mark, more than actual, actually usual. Azuku is actually outputting more radiation as they speak. This time though, he's controlling it. He knows that he can't injure him if he holds back that much, so he's not holding back nowhere near as much as he did the first time around. He begins to throw explosions at Muscular, trying to keep him at bay, and even seeping radiation within him slowly but surely to degrade any quirk or any anything that he can actually hold against him. Stamina, stuff like that, slowly but surely will go away and be sapped away from him. Muscular doesn't even realize this, and the more he starts using his quirk, it seems like the more he's getting drained, the more he's losing all his stamina, and Azuku is basically able to passively wear him down. That's until Muscular lands a clean shot to his jaw, landing clean 
stopped entirely and he gets smashed into the ground. Muscular is slowly fading away, but he just landed such a blow on Izuku that it's forcing him to try and regenerate. He begins to regenerate slowly, but it seems like Muscular is now on his feet. Muscular is now there and about to hit him, but just as he's about to, Bakugo comes out of nowhere and smashes his face basically right back into the ground using an explosion and Muscular is already so fatigued that he's out cold. Bakugo tries to pick up Azuku and does just that and basically has a bunch of other students help out and they begin to try and go back to the camp. But just as they are, it seems like, well, Bakugo is gone in an instant. Well, how did this happen and why would it happen? Bakugo at the sports festival, the one that Azuku did not see, well, he was, he was a target from the villains. The villains saw the way he was acting, the villains knew of him and how he acts around others, and his quirk is so similar to a villain that why not try to get him on board? But the only problem is, they didn't know that Izuku himself probably has more of a villainous quirk. But the only issue was, he wasn't even allowed to use his quirk at the festival. So Bakugo is taken away, and Izuku tries to get him back, but unfortunately he fails. His best friend slips through a portal, and Izuku doesn't even know what to do. Izuku then just goes throughout life. The next three days or so are all just a blur. He barely remembers much. His stamina is practically nothing. He needs time to recover, and he does just that. Eventually, eventually though, he catches wind of a tracker. A tracker that Momo Yayorozu has. It seems like he wants a copy of it, and he wants to go and, well, save his best friend, save Bakugo Katsuki. He gathers up a little team, and even though he's slightly injured, he goes out to do just that. He wants to save him and get out of there. But that plan would go to shambles quicker than you could possibly imagine. When they begin to head over, they're spotted far sooner than they ever would have guessed and they all, all are forced to split up in a matter of seconds. They all try to keep in touch, and Izuku's the only one near the battlefield. It seems like he's the last chance that Bakugo has, and he immediately dives toward it and tries to get him out of there as All For One and All Might are finally fighting and dueling their last, last time. Azuku tries to give Bakugo an opening to get out of harm's way, and they begin fighting together, syncing up their movements practically perfectly defeating most of the villains that are currently in front of them. Eventually an opening is occurred and they're able to slowly escape. But just as Bakugo is escaping and Izuku's right next to him, he tries to speak with Izuku, telling him basically thank you. But just as he looks back, he's not there. Izuku is getting dragged away by some quirk that All For One is currently using. All Might screams at All For One and punches him as hard as possible to try and get him away from Izuku and he grabs Azuku's face. Azuku begins to panic and luckily is able to somewhat squirm away and, well, All For One makes the choice to send his villain, villain group away just in case so that, well, they don't somehow die. All For One sees this boy as a possible, basically, quirk user that could be extremely powerful. Maybe if he somehow got his quirk, maybe if he somehow turned him over? No, he, he doesn't know, but he knows how strong he is. He's seen it. He can tell. Azuku regathers himself, but looks straight at All For One, and he, fear just goes through his body. Fear overwhelms him. He doesn't know what he's looking at. What the hell is this guy? His mind begins to race. His body begins to freak out as he stares at All For One. And everything after was just a blur. He doesn't even know what occurred. All he remembers was a week later waking up in a facility. A facility that had him completely restrained and a facility that basically kept him there forever. That's what it felt like. He would just sit there, nothing else. Azuku didn't even know what was happening. He just saw that he was in his glass bubble once again. Until finally someone approached and began speaking with him, and it was Aizawa. Aizawa told him that he needed to stay here, 
until his quirk was fully under control. And he's confused. Wasn't that the whole reason why I was there at UA? And Aizawa says yes, but unfortunately they weren't able to control his quirk. And unfortunately he did something pretty bad. And he's not in trouble to an extent. UA has caught a lot of flack, but unfortunately, or fortunately enough, they haven't been buried entirely. They're actually still okay. And luckily there were no casualties. Everybody got out safe. But Izuku's confused. What do you mean? What happened? What did I do? Back to when that day happened, Azuku went haywire. Azuku went nuclear. And he blew up that huge square mileage mileage of of that city they were in. And he wounded all for one so greatly that he needed actual medical treatment before he even went to Tartarus. So in a way, Azuku's a hero. He defeated all for one. But in a way, in another way, people are terrified. There's a split in the in society right now. And Azawa makes that pretty apparent, telling Azuku that half of them believe that he's a hero. The other half believe that he's a risk. Something bad waiting to happen. Azuku looks at Aizawa. What am I to you? A risk? Aizawa shakes his head. Kid, you're a hero. I've told you that since day one. It's hard. Everything is, especially with a quirk like yours. Trust me. I know. We understand. Azuku would be left there for another week or so, maybe even more. But eventually, someone would actually come up. It would be Aizawa again, but this time with Nezu. And Azuku tells him that he's been working hard trying to learn his quirk. And he promises that he'll make sure that he'll never do something like this again. And he says that when he gets out, he'll make sure to make them all proud. But Aizawa cuts him off. We were never not proud of you, kid. You've been through a shit ton. A lot more than most. And we realized the struggle behind that. But we did bring someone. Someone actually wanted to hear about you. And speak to you. Immediately, Azuku's confused. Who? Mirio? Night Eye? What's happening? But just as he begins the question, a little girl walks into frame. Walks in right in front of the glass and waves to Azuku, saying that she's heard a lot about him. That Mirio has told, or Lemillion has told her a ton. And Azuku was such on such a high pedestal with Sir Nidai. They've talked about him, or were talking about him before. Azuku's confused, and he looks at Aizawa's face and can tell Sir Nidai is not alive anymore. Luckily, Mirio is, but Sir Nidai isn't. He's happy to see that this little girl, whatever she went through, got out, but he questions why she like, basically wanted to meet him so, so badly, and he learns that her quirk maybe even more haywire than his. Azuku has trained so much to control it, and Aizawa wanted him to speak with her about controlling it as well. Azuku does just that, saying that anybody can be a hero, and then he looks around and looks around his glass and his little bubble and tells her that even though he's behind these bars, behind this glass, that he promises that he'll be out, and that he'll be a hero, just like Lamillion, just like Sir Nida. He's already created a bond with Eri, already created this, basically this brotherly and sisterly bond with her based on their quirks alone. He knows, he knows the, the terrible things that could happen if they let their quirks go completely out of control. And he now has another reason to work hard, not only for his mother that visit, visits him from time to time, bringing him some of his favorite foods, but also for this little girl. For her, for Aerie, making sure that the next generation that doesn't just include him realizes that yes, struggle is one thing, but giving up is another, and that Azuku will not give up. So he's going to make sure he trains harder and harder. And that's exactly what he does over a, over a course of months. Unfortunately, he misses out on so much. Of course, he does his regular schoolwork, that's just kind of his life, but he misses out on so much until he hears more and more destruction more and more of this war going outside he doesn't know what's happening that's until someone approaches him and it's actually mirio mirio has his cork back telling him that airy basically gave it back to him 
and at one point it was gone. Azuku was out of the loop so much, and he asked Mario what he wants and what's even going on. We need you. We need you bad. You need to help us. Azuku is confused. I don't even have full control over my quirk yet. What do you want me to do? Mirio says that there's one job. That there's a team out by basically a certain part of Japan fighting a giant monster. And that it's up to him to defeat it. And that with his quirk, he'll be able to. And if he wants to, well, make up for what he did. Even though it wasn't his fault and many think that he's a hero, including Lemillion. He knows how guilty Izuku feels. He knows that even though there's people out there that make him out to be a hero, he wants to prove that he's a hero to everybody. So it's time to prove it. Azuku watches as the screen in front of him goes down and these other soldiers come out and basically tell him that he's free to go. That this is not a time to keep him here, especially when he can help. So what is Azuku going to fight? What is he going to go head to head against? He's not even sure. But the team that is nearby and currently fighting is told to stand down and leave because their secret weapon has now been released. And that is a wrap for part three of what if Deku had a radioactive cork. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, a sub, a comment down below, all that good stuff. And I hope all y'all enjoyed um, this so far. I've actually really enjoyed this series. I think it's been pretty fun for me. Um, I've been trying to look for Deku What Ifs that I am, I enjoy, like I said before. I haven't enjoyed Deku What Ifs to a crazy extent, but this one I've been enjoying a lot, so um, that's good. Um, nonetheless, hope y'all enjoyed. Hope all y'all have an amazing day, and yeah, that's about it. Later. I don't